What's up guys, we are back again here on the YouTube channel. I know I took a few days off there and for those of you that weren't familiar and maybe you're watching for the first time, I was gone, I was in California uh, for about four days so did not have any videos coming out while I was over there. But we are back to it and today we are talking about Jack Hodden Shield and his career with the World of Outlaws NOS Energy Drink Sprint Car Series. Uh, a very long story career beginning full time, I believe in 1986. I think that was the first time that uh, it looked like he ran all of the races. 1985, he did run a pretty sizable schedule, but uh, not even close to 68 races. So I decided to start with 1986 here for Jack. And uh, this is going to be a long video. It's going to be another one of those videos where we're going to need two boards. The last time that happened was with Mark Kinzer. So today we're talking about Jack Hodgeshield, driver out of Worcester, Ohio. 1986, first season on the tour, 68 starts that year, two victories, 28 top fives, 45 top tens. He ended up fifth in points that first year, and he was driving the Daryl Saucier number number one ST. Now, I hope I said that right, Saucier, or Sa I'm pretty sure that's right, but man, has he been a car owner for a long time? I remember Brady Bacon a couple of years ago at the Chili Bowl uh, was running for him, so uh, Saucier been around for a very long time with that number one ST. 1987, 87 starts for Jack, two wins once again, 36 top five finishes, 63 top tens, and he was fourth overall in the point standings that year with the Outlaws, this time driving the Lee number two car. And yes, I do have, actually have the camera a little bit closer for this video because there is so much information on it. For those of you that would rather like to read it rather than me talk about it, I got the camera closer so you can read it a little bit better. 1988, 76 starts this year, Two wins, 22 top fives, 45 top tens, and he was eighth in the point standings. And what the craziest thing is, 88 might have been, a, might have been the craziest year of Jack Hodgenshield's career. I looked at the thirdturn.com for that season, and he had at least seven different car owners that he raced for that entire year. It may have been closer to eight or nine. There was one that was a, a number two. There was a number two T. There was a number one T, and then there was like a, a number one. So... Um, he had a lot of car owners in 1988 to get through the entire season with the Outlaws. 1989, he had 78 starts, 7 wins, 33 top 5 finishes, 56 top 10s, and he was 6th overall in the point standings. Splitting the season between the not number 48 car and the Powell 32U. So only 2 car owners in 89, uh, and he was able to split it basically down the middle between those 2 owners. In 1990, only 39 starts with the Outlaws, so was not full-time in either 1990 or in 1991. He had 39 starts in 91 as well. I would like for somebody in the comment section below, if they do know what happened those two years, why he wasn't a full-time driver, please let us know. Sometimes when you go that far back, it is super hard to find that type of information. Uh, I searched it up. I was typing in 1990, you know, Jack, Jack Hodgeshield injury, Jack Hodgeshield loses ride. I, I didn't really know what to, you know, search in there to find out what happened there. Uh, between those two seasons. But in 1992, he does come back full-time with the series. He has 79 starts, three wins, 33 top five finishes, 56 top tens, eighth overall in the point standings, and he split this season between the Casey Luna number 10 and the Guy For Forbrook number five. Now, that would not be the final time he'd run the Forbrook five. He would run that later on in his career, uh, but split those two, or that season between the two cars there. 1993 is the first year he runs the, probably the car he's most famous for, the Eldon number 22 car for 84 starts, zero wins this year, 29 top fives, 58 top tens, and he would run sixth overall in the point standings. And this would begin a very, very long year, a tenure with this car. And the car, like I mentioned, that made him the most famous, the Pennzoil 22 car. 1994, 87 wins, one top five, or sorry, one win, 33 top fives, 66 top tens, and he ended up sixth in the overall, in the overall point standings. Now, in 1995, I do have this written in green because I believe this is the best year of Jack Hodgeshield's career overall. Now, it isn't the most wins he's ever had in one season with the Outlaws, but he does get very, very close to winning the championship. So 93 starts, 6 wins, 58 top 5s, and 81 top 10s. Was only 12 top 10s away from being in the top 10 in every single race with the Outlaws in 1995. He would finish second in points behind Dave Blaney by 142, and that would be the closest he ever gets to a World of Outlaws championship in his career. Uh, I don't think he even, looking back over here, he never even finished fourth in points or better after 1995. So 1996, 78 starts this time, one win, 12 top ten or 12 top fives and 43 top tens. He was 10th in points that year. Now, somebody else in the comments knows what happened in 96. 
it seems like a pretty big drop off in performance as far as the numbers go to go from six wins to one 58 top fives to 12 and 80 i mean splitting his top tens almost in half right there i'm not sure what happened to jack hodgshill in 1996 but i would be curious if somebody knows uh if what what exactly happened the crew chief change i'm not really sure but 96 was definitely a down year 1997 92 starts two wins 51 top fives 77 top tens and i lied he does get back to fourth in the point standings in 1997 but that would be the final time he gets up to fourth in his career with the outlaws 1998 we're switching over to this side of the board now there were so many years that i was i had to make two different columns here in 98 he had 84 starts 15 wins so this was the, the year that he had the most wins in his World of Outlaws career, 47 top fives, 66 top tens, but he was seventh in points. And so that's why I kind of put 95 as the year written in green. This is best overall season in his career. Uh, 98 I was definitely close between those two years, but I went with the second place finish in points, uh, trumping the, the year in 1998. 1999 did not look like he ran full time in that year as well with only 53 starts with the series. He had pretty long gaps in between a couple of points throughout the season. He did not run all of the races in 1999. Now in 2000, he had 90 starts, four wins, 24 top fives, and 44 top tens. He would once again finish up 10th in the point standings. Now in 2001, only 35 starts that year, and thus making my case for thinking that the developers of the game got all of their information for the 2002 game from the year 2000. Uh, is looking a little bit more viable because at first it looked like it was going to be the 2001 year was where they got all the information but then we've seen a couple of guys so far in these videos that didn't run in 01 and they ran a lot in 2000 and they made the game in 02 so um yeah 2001 only 35 starts not sure what happened there as well would love to hear some people down in the comment section letting us know what happened there 2002 the year that the world outlaws video game came out he had 78 starts, three wins, 20 top fives, 44 top tens, and he would finish up 13th in the overall point standings, driving the guy Forbrook number five. So he drives the Forbrook five in 2002. He hadn't driven it since 1992, so 10 years in between rides there uh, with Guy Forbrook. 2003 does not run the full season, 46 starts, and that's it. 2004, only 16 starts. Uh, so I'm not sure if maybe that was the year. Was that the year of NST or, or USA or whatever it was? I'm not sure. But 2004, only 16 starts. I'll have to go back in the in the book and see here. When I make the second board, I'll, I'll try and mention that and see if I can figure out what happened in 04. 2005, only 36 starts. So for three years there, Jack Hodgshield not full-time with the series. But he does come back uh, in full force in 2006 with 65 starts, four wins, 19 top five finishes, 46 top tens, and he would end up fifth in points that year driving the right number 35 car. He had a pretty good stint with them as well. Ran for them in 2007 for 71 starts, two wins, 12 top five finishes, and 33 top tens. This time he would end up 11th in the point standings. 2008 would bring him a new car owner and a one that he was relatively successful with. 62 uh, starts, five wins in the first year, 22 top fives, 47 top tens, and he would be top five in the points for the final time in his career against the Outlaws. This is driving the Carnahan R19 car. Uh, that was, uh, I can't remember what the sponsor was on that car, but it was a pretty big deal uh, to be in that car. They had some pretty big funding uh, for the R19. 2009, he's back with them again for 63 starts. This time, zero wins, 14 top fives, 31 top tens, and ninth overall in the point standings. And then in 2010, it was the final year of Jack Hodgshield's career as a full time outlaw, and it would be the final year that he would get a World of Outlaws win to his credit. 58 starts, 5 wins, 13 top fives, 32 top tens, and 12 overall in the point standings. So a super, super long career here for Jack Hodgshield, ranging, what, one, two, four decades long there as a full-time driver. And then he even ran in the 2020s as well. So he ran with the Outlaws for more than five decades. Uh, a, an incredible career, one of the all-time greats with uh, in sprint car racing, one of the most recognizable names as well. Uh, the Wild Child, obviously a very famous nickname that everybody knows about if you know who Jack Hodgshield is. And another thing that I saw and I read in my research for this, Jack Hodgshield apparently had one with 55 different car owners. I don't know if all 55 are against the Outlaws, but 50, it doesn't matter. He won with 55 different car owners, which is absolutely berserk. Uh, this guy has drove for a lot of different car owners and had a lot of success, and he's won some of the sport's biggest races. 
which we will talk about here in just a moment. I've got to switch boards and we'll talk about the achievements and the accolades and his overall starts and stats with the Outlaws. So I'll be right back and switch over boards. All right, got board switched over now. So let's take a look real quick at World Outlaws stats for Jack Cotton Shield. Nearly 2,000 starts with the Outlaws at 1,951. He had 72 wins, which right now puts him at 13th on the all-time win list. 607 top five finishes for 31% of the time he was inside the top five. And 1,177 top tens for 60% of the time Jack Cotton Shield finished top 10 against the Outlaws. So uh, insane numbers. Uh, I wish he would have got to 2,000 starts, but uh, that's just crazy stuff, man. Uh that that is those numbers right there are of a legend right i mean jack hodge will be remembered forever uh, as one of the best of all time against uh the world of outlaws and really just in sprint car racing in general and not only those numbers uh, are attributing to that but these over here the accolades for jack 2003 the mopar million win without the wings on at eldora for two hundred thousand dollars to win he won the 1993 historical big one that was a hundred thousand to win the 1999 Front Row Challenge, that was the one that uh, the video on, on Facebook and YouTube is circulating around uh, where he came from dead last after taking the challenge and won it for 50000 to win. Uh, he won the 2007 Brad Doty Classic. That was at Lima Land that year. A two-time winner of the Grand Annual Sprint Car Classic down in Australia. He was a three-time winner of the King's Royal at Eldora Speedway. A three-time top five finisher during the National Open at Williams Grove Speedway. He was second at the 1998 Knoxville Nationals, so very close to getting a Nationals win. He has 30 wins with the All-Star Circuit of Champions, a six-time winner with the USAC Sprint Car Series, a three-time Gold Cup Race of Champions winner, a three-time Trophy Cup winner at, at uh, Tulare, and he was a 2009 National Sprint Car Hall of Famer. Uh, wow, and that's not even everything, right? If we were to go through everything with Jack Hodgenshield's career, uh, this video would be three hours long. Uh, there is just so many achievements and so many things that he's done uh, that uh, I could write up on this board that people would be like, wow, uh, this guy did it all, right? So um, a lot of money won under this little uh, section over here. And uh, man, crazy to think that, uh, that uh, he was able to accomplish all of these things and so many big money events all the way throughout his career. And they were spread out, I mean, a long ways throughout them. Jack Hodgenshield won the Trophy Cup when he was 60 years old. 60! He won the Trophy Cup at Tulare. That is absolutely crazy. And then you see some of these other numbers. I mean, 1993. So, 93 all the way to that Trophy Cup win, which was I think was like a couple years ago, like four or five years ago, maybe. Um, so, yeah, wild stuff. Also, another thing I liked about Jack Hodgenshield was he would run without the wings on, and he would win. Uh, you know, obviously the Mopar Million, but six times a winner with the USAC. Uh, sprint Car Series, he would run at the Oval Nationals as well down there at Paris Auto Speedway. Uh, Jack, he wouldn't care if it was a midget or a Silver Crown car or a non-wing car. He would run everything. And there just aren't that many guys like that anymore that have the success, you know, with the wings on, peel them off, and go have success without them as well. He was a special breed, and uh, it sucks to see him retire, but man, he had one hell of a career. So hopefully you guys enjoyed this video. We'll be back tomorrow for another one of these videos from the World of Outlaws 2002 video game, looking at the career of the drivers that were in that game. Hope you enjoyed this one, and we'll see you back here on the channel tomorrow.